Let's say you want to make a top-down, classic, arcade-style shooter game in Unreal Engine 4. I've built a lot of projects like this, and I've experimented with some different ways of controlling the pawn. You can open up the twin-stick shooter template for one example that Epic has already given us. Uh, what I want to show you today is what I consider to be the most straightforward way to just jump in and make it work really nicely. Um, so I'm here in a, a blank Blueprints project. All I've done so far is uh, make a folder within content called Pawn Controls, and that's a nice practice because it makes sure that if you import assets from other projects, you don't get naming collisions. So let's get in and uh, start with by making our pawn. So I'm going to make a blueprint class, and uh, you can see I already have expanded here the all classes area. Um, instead of just extending pawn, which you might expect, or which I've done in many projects, I'm going to go ahead and grab default pawn, because that's going to give us something quite useful. And I'll call it BP ship. Let's open that up, and we can see that by extending default pawn, we inherited a movement component. And it's this movement component that's going to make our lives a lot easier. So, of course, in order to see this on the screen, I'm going to need some kind of geometry. Uh, for simplicity, I'm just going to grab a cone and drop it in, and uh, oops, face it along the x-axis. And I'll also just drop a camera onto this so that I can follow this pawn. That's fine. Uh, Put it right onto there. And, uh, you know, if you wanted to get fancy, you could use a, a camera boom, but I'm just trying to do this quick and dirty. So let's uh, select that camera and, whoops, pull it up a bit. There, that should be good enough for our purposes. All right, so in order to see that ship show up, uh, probably the easiest thing to do here is make ourselves a game mode. So game mode base, we'll call it BP game mode. And we'll have that game mode know that our pawn is BP pawn, or BP ship rather. Good. And we need to, in the project settings, set that game mode to BP game mode. So that should be enough that if we hit play, yeah, we have this uh, cone shaped ship. And if I use WASD, I can already move around, but I am moving around in kind of a strange way. Uh, and E and Q are going to move me up and down the left and right arrows are going to rotate my controller. So right now I'm just holding down left and pressing W, and you can see that I'm, I'm moving in kind of a circular path. Um, so none of that is quite what I want. Uh, for a long time this puzzled me. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. Let's take another look at BP ship. So inside of the movement component, we can set some values, like uh, how fast we want this to go, maybe we'll slow them down a little bit. Um, we can change this acceleration if we wanted to. And, you know, you can play with these values all you want. Um, what I'm interested in here is uh, constraint to plane. That's one way that we could prevent the ship from moving up and down when we press Q and E. But that wouldn't actually solve this weirdness that the, uh, the arrow keys are changing my controller axis. So instead, I want to find a setting, which is... Not there. Here it is. Under Pawn, there's this option to add default movement bindings. And so even though I, I haven't done anything else with the project, you know, I haven't gone in and set input axes at all, this option will add default ones, WASD and arrow keys. And I don't want that. I want a more uh, direct control over what my ship is allowed to do or not. So if I uh, compile and play and click in here now, if I hear me hitting my keyboard, WASD isn't doing anything, arrow keys aren't doing anything. Um, but that's good, because I want to use movement component, but I want to use it on my own terms. So over in project settings, you know, the way that you do this normally is go to your input, and let's add in some axis mappings. So standard uh, axis inputs here. Back over in BP ship, I will go to the event graph and listen for those axis events. So, on the move right axis event, here is where I can still use the power of this movement component by calling a method that's called add movement input. And this is provided by the fact that we already have this movement component on the pawn. Now it needs to know the scale value, which will be this axis value ranging from negative 1 to 1. We also need a world direction, and this is where, again, a really handy uh, blueprint node comes in. We can ask this pawn 
which way its right vector is. So we can say get actor right vector. So it gets us the vector which is to the to the right of this actor, right? I mean that, that's exactly what it says. And we can pass that into world direction. And then we quickly add a matching one for move up. And once again, add movement input. And this will be get actor up vector, which in our case is a forward vector. Oh, actually, maybe that should be a get actor forward vector. Yeah, sorry. You know, in a common parlance, up and forward are often used the same, but of course, in three-dimensional space, uh, they're not. So, compile that, save it, run the game, and now we have W, S, D, and A. And everything is working really nicely. Q and E are not bound to anything, that's what I'm pressing now. Arrow keys are not bound to anything, which means I have perfect control over this pawn. The, uh, the built-in system will handle collisions fine for us, too, so if we want to see that, let's go back to the... Um, Go back to the level, and let me just add in some quick and dirty geometry. Here's a cube. Pull it up a little bit and uh, change its scale. So now as I come in here and I run up against this, whoops, <laughs> I actually bounced up over it because uh, I'm round. <laughs> I didn't expect that, but you know, I can fix it. So let's go back into BP Ship, and uh, remember there was this... Um, There we are. Uh, so there was this uh, planar uh, constraint that we can add. So let's see, where was that? Planar movement constraint to plane. And uh, let's see, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be in the uh, Z plane. There we go. So now I bump into that thing. And uh, what I'm doing now is I can press uh, right and then hold down up also. It's W and D. And you can see it snakes right along that geometry with no trouble at all. So I hope that's helpful for you. There are, of course, many other options. You could use uh, the physics system to manage your input by setting velocities and vectors. Uh, you could go in and manually watch for WASD and set offsets. You could take the approach that's in the twin stick shooter. Um, but I find for something that is a, a classic style top-down camera, this is a really nice way to approach it.